praise the lord hallelujah good evening church good evening brethren we thank god for the grace given us even at this moment to be in god's presence we are grateful to god for the privilege and the opportunity that he has given us we are we are thankful to him we honor his holy name we adore his majesty we adore his holiness father will bless you father we glorify you father we magnify you let us pray heavenly father king of glory we thank you once again for the privilege to go into your world we thank you for the privilege to gather unto you the bible says this scripture shall not depart from judah neither the lord give up between his feet until shiloh comes for unto him shall the guardian of his people be we are gathered not unto man but we are gathered unto you father we ask so god that our gathering unto you will be reverent will be solemn and lord god almighty will have a great and a glorious time in your presence we release ourselves to be used of you we ask so god that you anoint our tongue to speak your word only we will not do injustice to your word we ask so god that you will cause your word to come out of our mouth to the lives and to impact the lives of people that there will be a difference in jesus name sweet spirit of god divine we invite you into our gathering you say wherever two or three are gathered in your name you are there we recognize your presence and we ask so god that you take absolute control let jesus be glorified we pray for everyone that ought to be in service that ought to be on online draw them oh god bring them oh god remove obstacles from the way remove excuses from the way let everyone open up and be ready to be impacted in the name of jesus father we vow to return the glory and praise to you at the end the, we pray and we come against every spirit that buys and sells every spirit that wonders every spirit of distraction you have no part and you have no lot here father thank you because at the end your name will be glorified giving you praise and glory in jesus name we are prayed amen praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah okay we thank god for the today's um, uh, fellowship um, this is the midweek service of the king's chamber lekki the citadel of favor we thank god again for always giving us the privilege to gather unto him and so we want to uh, without much ado go into a time of worship and praise as we are blessed by the ministry of Don Muen. Praise the Lord. Trade your every heart for the art of joy. Celebrate what God has done. Join the song of praise as we give the gift. Celebrate the Lord of God. Jesus is our Lord. He is reigning here. We declare His kingdom come. Darkness has to flee in His holy mouth. Celebrate the Lord of love, all creation sing all in will, hear the oceans roar, and proclaim that Christ is Lord. Let the earth proclaim it, celebrate in your heavy heart, for the heart of joy, celebrate what God has done. The song of praise as we gather here. Celebrate the Lord of Lord. Jesus is the Lord, He is reigning here. We declare His kingdom come. Let's ask to flee in this holy mouth. Celebrate the Lord of Lord. All creation, sing all creation. Hear the oceans roar and proclaim that Christ is Lord. Let the earth proclaim it. Let the earth proclaim it. Celebrate.
Trade your heavy heart for the heart of joy. Celebrate what God has done. Sing a song of praise as we gather here. Celebrate the Lord of love. Celebrate the Lord of love. Celebrate the Lord of love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord all the time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God once again for the privilege to be gathered. Like I said, um, today, um, those of us who are members of the King's Chamber Leki, you know that this month was declared the month of signs, wonders, and miracles. Is our season of signs, wonders, and miracles. And on Sundays, in the last three Sundays, we have looked at, we've studied all of these. But last Sunday, we couldn't conclude because it was Thanksgiving Sunday, so we spoke about Thanksgiving last Sunday, and so I want to conclude the, the, the you know the teachings and the preachings around signs, wonders, and miracle, so that that will end with this month as we launch into another month, and by the grace of God, you know another theme for the new month. So today is the last Wednesday, um, and the last service for this month. By next Sunday is a new month, so I just felt I needed to conclude that conversation and that teaching around signs wonders and miracles praise the lord so um so t- today we'll be looking at the dimensions of the miraculous dimensions of the miraculous praise the lord so we'll be looking at the dimensions of the miraculous um uh, if you remember um when we started looking at this first um the first sunday of this month we looked at what sign is what a wonder is and what a miracle is um because of time i may not be able to recap all of this so i'm going to be a bit fast in speaking to some of the things we've learned so we understood that the miraculous or a miracle is an activity or an event that is that defies the law of nature that is that does not obey the natural law an event an activity that that you cannot explain you, you either by your intellect by science or by logic so a miracle is an occurrence that you cannot explain with your sense with your science or with logic or you say okay this is what you, it, it defies every natural law and logic and science that's a miracle a miracle is an extraordinary event that does not obey the natural law in fact it it proves the natural law um incompetent as it were so that's a miracle praise the lord and I remember, uh, I think two Sundays ago, we were looking at okay, so why the miraculous? Why do we? Why why do we? Uh, why do miracles happen? And we gave uh, quite a lot of reasons. I'll just give us five, and I'll move very quickly. Why the miraculous? Number one, a miracle is a proof to the unbeliever. A miracle is a proof to the unbeliever. In John chapter four, verse forty-eight, Jesus said that. John four forty-eight, Jesus said unto them, except you see signs and wonders. You will not believe so people do not believe or may not may not quickly believe except they see signs and wonders so the miraculous signs and wonders is a proof or a token or evidence to the unbeliever so when an unbeliever sees a blind man who was blind from birth his eyes pop open then they will know that truly the power of god is at work so um, the miraculous is a proof to 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 the unbelievers sometimes a miracle happens to counter opposition and shut the mouth of opponent. In Acts chapter four, um, you remember the in Acts chapter four, verse twenty-nine. Acts four, twenty-nine. And now, Lord, behold, they are threatening, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak your word, by stretching forth your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child. So when signs and wonders are done, it 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 it, it silences opposition. The opposition, in fact, remember uh, Gamaliel said that that a notable miracle has happened amongst us. We cannot deny. So when something tangible happens, every opposition uh, opposition or every naysayer, every gainsayer, every you know, it, they are silenced. So this happened to silence you know the opposition. Also, miracles happen to confirm the validity of the gospel. The, 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 the signs and wonders happen to show credence, to lay credence to the gospel. In, in Mark chapter 16 and verse 20, 
um, Mark 16 20 and they went forth preaching everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following so the Lord confirmed the word of the gospel with signs following so when they preached and the, the, the miraculous happened it was a confirmation that yes this gospel is for real praise the Lord so the signs and wonders and miracles happen to validate the gospel um, it also happens to draw people to salvation um, you know the spectacular the miraculous happen so that people can respond positively to the gospel in Acts chapter 2 verse 19 Acts chapter 2 verse 19 to 21 Acts chapter 2 verse 19 to 21 and I will show wonders in heaven and I'll show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor and smoke the sun will be turned into darkness so all of this will happen verse 21 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved whosoever so I will show all of this thing and then people would realize that they need salvation so whoever after this signs wonders and miracles have happened whoever will call upon the name of the lord shall be saved so um, um these are reasons why the miraculous happen and remember i mentioned uh, i think three sundays ago that for us as believers for us as christians we we are supposed to work in the spectacular the miraculous should be our natural habitat so unlike the unbelievers who this sign is for for them to believe and for and to shut them up we manifest it is a daily occurrence it's, it's just like the air we're breathing we should walk in signs and wonders we should walk in the miraculous because it's our bad right praise the lord so that's that's those are the reasons why we have that so um um quickly want to look at the dimensions of the miraculous as recorded in in the bible I want to look at the, the they want to see you know the dimensions of the miraculous the first is the miracle leading to supernatural acts of creation so the creation the the creation of the earth in is, is is in itself a miracle why because nothing was existing before now god spoke the word into existence there was the word was created out of nothing so nothing and then there was the the, the, the word of god came forth and there was creation let's look at genesis chapter 1 or let's look at Hebrews before we go to Genesis. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. That buttresses what I just said. E Hebrews 11 and verse 3. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which we see now were not made from the things which do appear so the word was created the word came into existence by the spoken word of god by the by the creative word of god so god said let there be and it it came let there be and it it was so the word was created it's a miracle so let's go to genesis chapter one and you see how god said let there be let there be and there was let there be and and there was Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens, the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let. so before now, there was no light. Before now, nobody knew what light was. So God spoke it into existence. God created light. God spoke, let there be light. And there was light. Praise the Lord. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the, from the waters. Let there be a firmament dividing the waters from the waters. So the firmament was about called heaven, or called the heavens, and then the, 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 the firmament below, the waters. And that never existed before. So God created it by the spoken word. Praise the Lord. So we see in the dimension of the miraculous that is creative. The same way, today, we see God also using, you know, uh, um, uh, um, using his servants for creative miracles. We have heard of testimonies i have heard of testimonies where 
nothing existed but God created. The testimony that readily comes to mind is the one shared by Pastor Paul Anonche, where one of the, the wives of his pastor, pastor one of his branches, had no womb. And Pastor Paul didn't know that. But Pastor Paul said, God says, you're going to have a child. How does a woman that does not have a womb, how does how would that person have a child? Because medically speaking, scientifically speaking, you need a womb to carry the, the, the baby, right? And nurture the baby for nine for, for nine months. But that's why I said that a miracle is an act and or an occurrence that defies the law of nature, that defies science. You can't explain it by science. Long story short, the woman conceived true, true, and when you will go for antenatal, they will say they said that they saw something like a sack that the baby was enclosed in a sack, not necessarily a womb, but in a sack. The baby was delivered, and today, to the glory of God, the baby. So that's a creative miracle, a miracle that something out of nothing is brought forth. Praise the Lord. So that's the first dimension of the miraculous. We have miracles leading to supernatural acts of creation. So it God created the heavens and the earth, and to the glory of God, we still have men of God who are still being used of God for creative miracles. We hear of um, uh, Baba again. Uh, some of his testimony, some of the miracles in his testimony, uh, somebody having one, one leg shorter than the other, and right there and there, the shorter leg grows to, to, the, me, to the length of the other the normal leg. So you see creative miracles. Those are creative miracles. Praise the Lord. The second dimension of the miraculous is miracles which involve suspending the law of nature, where because God wants to prove himself, or God wants to do something, or there's a need for uh, 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 um, God to demonstrate his power or demonstrate his might. The law of nature is suspended. We see that, for example, when Jesus calmed the boisterous storm. The storm was rave, ravaging and boisterous and was, you know, almost as if it was going to swallow, swallow the disciples. But Jesus said, peace be still. Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 8. Jesus only spoke the word and said, you storm. You are you are you are programmed to be boisterous, you are programmed to 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 rage, right? But I operate a law that is above you, and I say be still. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 23. And when Jesus entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And the disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful oh you of little faith then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea and there was great calm and disciples marveled and said what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him even the winds and the sea obey him so the dimension of the miraculous where the law of nature it's it is natural when there's a tempest for the for the waves and the storms to be disturbed and quote unquote but jesus said let there be peace let there be uh, peace and there was peace. We also see that in John chapter 6, Jesus walking on water. The law of, uh, of um, um, gravity is that a higher, uh, sorry, a, a substance with heavier weight would, would, would fall. So he throws something to the air, the law of gravity pulls it down because there's a gravitation towards the center of the epicenter of the earth. So it is not normal, it is not humanly possible for somebody to walk on water because so a human being has weight, it should sink. But in John chapter 6, we see Jesus walking on water to defy the law of nature, the law of gravity. So that law of gravity was suspended. John 6 16. And when it was now come, the disciples went down to the sea and and entered into a ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed above five and twenty um, furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near unto the ship, and they were afraid. And he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Praise the Lord. They saw Jesus walking on the sea. So that defied the law of nature. We see the same in, 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 in Second Kings chapter 6. Um, because of time, I not read it. Where a metal floated, a metal is a heavy substance. It's supposed to sink, but Elijah, Elijah commanded the axe head to float, and the axe head floated. They defied the law of gravity. So the miraculous is involved in suspending the law of nature. Praise the Lord. That's the second dimension to the miraculous. The second dimension to the, to the miraculous is a suspension. So. 
again because of you and i new testament believers god can suspend the law of nature for you to be blessed hallelujah god will suspend the law of nature so that you can get your miracle god will suspend the law of nature so that you can get that thing which are trusting him for which are believing him for and god is still in the business of doing that praise the lord so god can reverse in fact um uh, we've, had, we've had testimonies of women who have gone past menopause women who you know uh, uh they are past the 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 age of childbearing where you know spectacularly they conceive and they give birth i have a testimony a woman that waited on the lord a couple that waited on the lord for 19 years and the woman had passed the age of not ivf she had four four three girls and a boy four four at once not ivf so god can suspend the law of nature for you to be blessed and i pray for you and i prophesy to whoever is watching that god will suspend the law of nature for you to be blessed in jesus name number three the another dimension of the miraculous is the miracle of physical healing of the body physical healing of the body and we see that in all so many instances we see a man born blind you know now you know the interesting thing about the the, the miracles of physical healing is that it cannot be explained by medical science so let's look at john chapter 9 about the man born blind because even disciples of jesus asked jesus john chapter 9 verse 1 to 7 very quickly and as jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth and disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind and jesus said neither had this man sin nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. So God wanted to display his awesomeness. God wanted to display his splendor. God wanted to display his power. And so this man that was born blind, God wanted to show that even if you think that this person has no sight, but born blind from, from birth. So he has lost his retina, lost his, uh, well, all of those things. The Bible says, as long as, as long as is it, I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said, Go, wash in the pool of Ceylon, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way there and washed, and he came seen. Praise the Lord. So, you know, uh, uh, medical science says that if your retina, my dear wife, correct me if I'm correct, has been damaged beyond reasonable beyond any that you can't see again that you know they say there's a particular this that once it's damaged you 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 have, you have lost your sight you cannot you cannot see okay the optic nerve if the optic nerve thank you my doctor wife the optic nerve is damaged forget it you can't see so this man was born blind as it were no he didn't have sight at all but god reversed it so it's the miraculous so science cannot explain that you cannot there's no signs that can explain how a man born blind so it's not a case of okay maybe uh he's, he was losing his sight gradually it was glaucoma or it was um, a cataract oh if it's cataract you can see one correct it or glaucoma it was a case of a man born blind but the miraculous happened praise the lord the man also that was lame we see that in acts chapter 3 we see that in acts chapter 14 a lame man you remember in acts chapter okay let's also read acts chapter 3 because that's the man at the beautiful gate he also at um, Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the night hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb. So you see that these are not I happen chance. This is not a case of okay, but uh, the man used to work now. Maybe it was a uh, uh, polio that caught him, or maybe no. It was a case of a man born that was late even from his mother's womb so right from the womb has been that condition a man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask arms of them that entered into the temple who seen peter and john about to go into the temple ask arms and peter fastening his eyes on upon him with john said look unto us and he gave it unto them expecting to receive something of them then peter said silver and gold i have known but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Look at this. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So before now, he was crippled. He had, he had never walked. So there is, the, 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 as the doctors will say, he had, he had wasted. His bones and his muscles had wasted. But look at what happened. Verse 8. 
and he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into, into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping. So the question is that a man who had never walked before, shouldn't he, you know, that God, God, that God, God, learn how to walk. But the Bible says not only was he walking, he was walking and leaping. He was immediately learned how to walk. Praise the Lord. That is a miracle. You cannot explain that. Because a man who had never walked before, you would expect that he would take one step, take another step, and would try to balance himself. But the Bible says that he was walking and leaping. So a man born lame from the mother's womb. Praise the Lord. So this is a miracle. It's a miracle of the physical healing of the body. We see a man that was dumb, a man that was blind, a man that was lame. All of this, Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21. So the miracle of physical healing of the body. So that's the third dimension of the miraculous that is recorded in the Bible. The fourth dimension is a miracle that demonstrates power over death. Now, humanly speaking or scientifically speaking, if a man dies, that is the end of it. And that is why you need to go and collect a death certificate. Why? Because a doctor will check you and certify you dead, dead, dead. That this person is dead. He stopped breathing. It's not a case of he fainted. It's not a case of a state of coma. It's not a state. It's not a case of okay. So maybe he just fainted. Let's revive him. No. So once a medical doctor issues a certificate of death, certified that a man is dead, that is the end of life. That is life is as ended. But to prove that God has power over death, the miracle that demonstrates power over death happens. Of course, in John chapter eleven, we see that of Lazarus. John chapter 11 verse 43. John 11 43. John chapter 11 and verse 43. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, comfort! Lazarus, comfort! And he that was dead, he had been dead for four days, came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound, and his face was bound about with napkin. Jesus said unto him, Lose him, and let him go. So, just to prove that it was not a case of Lazarus fainted, it was not a case of Lazarus was in a state of coma. He had been dead for four days. He had been certified for this. They have taken him into the into the tomb. They had covered his face. So even if he, even if you let's assume he fainted, by the time they they you know wrapped him around and they snuffed his nose, the man he won't be able to breathe. You can't hold your breath for four days. So it was a case a it was confirmed case that he was definitely dead. But to show that God had power over death, the miracle that demonstrates power over death, Jesus said, Lazarus, comfort, and he came forth. That is why I know that in your life as well, the miracle that will re resurrect everything that is dead, God will cause to happen in Jesus' name. Situations that you consider dead, cases that you consider hopeless, things that you think that is done, dusted, and forgotten, or it not, there is no hope there anymore. Admission you think you have lost, Job opportunities you think you think you have lost business opportunities that they even they, they, they themselves told you that forget it it is gone god will bring about a reversal for you to be blessed in jesus name so it's still the miracle of power over death we see the same thing in luke chapter 7 in luke chapter 7 the raising of the widow the son of the widow of name in luke chapter 7 let's quickly look at it luke chapter 7 verse 14 and 15 luke 7 14 and 15 and he came and touched the bearer, and they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and delivered him unto his mother. Praise the Lord. So we see the young man, they are, not only was he dead, they were carrying him to his grave. They were, so they were, they, are, they, were, they were carrying him outside of the city. So it was not a case of the guy fainted. They would have waited a few days, but he was dead. And Jesus touched the bearer just simply say young man arise and he that was dead arose and began to speak praise the lord so we see that also um, um jesus himself was raised from the dead acts chapter 3 and verse 30 acts chapter 17 and verse 21 so the fourth dimension of the miraculous is miracle that demonstrates power over death praise the lord quickly the fifth dimension the fifth dimension the fifth dimension of the miracle is the demonstration of Jesus' power over evil spirits. Remember what we are talking about. That, that it, when you talk about a miracle, it is it is an occurrence that defies science, that defies logic, that defies 
that defies common sense. You can't explain that defies science. So science can't explain it. So all the miracles we've seen are science can't explain. So the fifth dimension is the miracle that demonstrates Jesus' power over demonic evil spirits. We see in Matthew chapter 12, the spirit of blindness, dumbness, cast out. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. Quickly. Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 22. Matthew 12, 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil. So you see him possessed with the devil. And he was blind and dumb. And he healed him. Insomuch that the blind and the dumb spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed. And they said, Is this not the son of David? Praise the Lord. They were amazed because this guy possessed of the devil. Now, science can't explain an evil spirit that possesses somebody. You see... You see, uh, um, someone that's possessed two things that under normal, normal circumstances he is not able to do. He has it demonstrates such power or such violence. You see, some I mean, those of you who probably have witnessed deliverance um, 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 ministrations, someone that's possessed, you see him, how he would tear himself, how he would you know be so violent that it takes three, four able body men to hold such a person down. Somebody in the natural state is maybe not not a uh, not a big frame but when that evil spirit takes over you see how it begins to react you know but bible says that even the the person possessed of a devil that was blind and dumb jesus simply commanded and spoke and caused that devil that devil to come out and the dumb spoke and the blind saw and the people were amazed praise the lord in mark chapter 5 we see the, the maniac who was also delivered. Um, Mark chapter 5, time will not allow us to read this. It's a very long read, f- uh, the first 16 verses. Remember, the, 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 when Jesus came into the other side of the country of gatherings, the, that guy, the Bible says that they, w- they would bind him with chain, they would hold him, but he would break loose the chain. That's why I said that when that demon comes over them, they are violent. He will break the chain and he will go to, you know, go to the desert, go to the tomb and he will be there. A person in his normal state cannot, you know, manifest that. But praise the Lord Jesus and 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 verse 13. And forthwith Jesus gave leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swines, and they ran violently and down the steep. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. In his right frame of mind, praise the Lord. So that guy who had been possessed got delivered and now came into his right senses, and they realized that it could only be a miracle. Praise the Lord. We see the unclean spirit cast out in Act in Mark chapter one. We see the spirit of divination cast out in Acts chapter sixteen. Remember, in Acts chapter sixteen, when Paul and Silas will be going to the temple, and that young girl with the spirit of divination would say that all of that. So this is these miracles happen to demonstrate. Jesus having power over unclean spirits. Dimension number six. Dimension number six. Miracles which lead to elements obeying God's commands. Praise the Lord. Miracles that also lead to elements. Now, God or uh, uh, um, Jesus speaking to the elements and the elements out of nature, out of sync, out of the natural uh, 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 flow of things are obeying the word of the Lord. We see very a popular and familiar scripture john um, um uh, occurrence john chapter 2 the uh, um, um jesus at the uh, at the wedding marriage of cana uh, in uh, cana in galilee john chapter 2 which is his first miracle john chapter 2 because of time um verse 7 and jesus said unto them fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim so the, the 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 messengers filled the pot with water and he said unto them draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was now made wine he knew not whence it was but the servants which drew the water knew so let me explain what has happened here so jesus says to them fill this pot with water they fill it with water jesus says take scoop out of this and go and give this uh, um, chairman of the occasion they scooped as far as they were concerned it was still water 
between when they scooped and when they got to the chairman of the occasion and the man tasted it it was no longer water it had become wine not only was it wine it was a good wine a choice test wine and so the point is how did water become wine it is defined the law of nature it is defined you can't there's no scientific explanation for it so it was not a case of okay jesus um put something inside the pot or jesus mix something and then you can say oh okay jesus did titration it was no no titration it was pure miracle praise the lord so jesus turns water into wine in john chapter 16 we see the miracle of the feeding with five loaves seven loaves of uh, bread and five fishes jesus feeding the multitude the, the uh, four thousand men with not counting the women and the children how do you explain let's go there john chapter 6 how do you explain how Verse 9, there is a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes. Now, five barley loaves and two small fishes. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and disciples to the, to the multitude. Now, look at what happened here. Therefore, they gathered after people had eaten and were filled. They gathered twelve baskets with the fragrance of the barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. So question, how does five barley loaves and two fishes multiply to feed 4,000 men and then you have left 12 baskets? It's a miracle. It, there's no other scientific explanation but a miracle. People ate 4,000 men without counting children and women ate and were fed and they still had leftover of 12 baskets full. So it is God showing that when it comes to nature, I can suspend nature to bring about the miraculous to demonstrate the power of God over and above nature. Praise the Lord. We see also um, um, in Numbers chapter 16 where the ground opened to swallow those who, who were antagonizing Moses. The ground had never so it opened up. Now, interestingly, you know, it opened exactly where these guys were and swallowed them up. Now, and it closed up again. So all of these things happen to demonstrate, to demonstrate that Jesus had power over nature. May I also say to you, the Bible says that the works I do shall you do, and greater works than this shall you do because I go unto the Father. So the the, the, the the era of the miracle is not over. If Jesus performed this spectacular, if Jesus performed a miracle, you and I have been given, you know, the authority, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto us. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20 verse 19 and verse 20, to go and to use that same power. So we can still also use the same power, the same authority that Jesus has to bring about the manifestation of the miraculous. Hallelujah. So, beloved, the miraculous is real. You and I can work in it. Praise the Lord. Now, the seventh one, because of time, the seventh dimension of the miraculous is miracles that show that God has power over animals and over inanimate, inanimate things. So the, a miracle. Now, animals don't talk, right? Plants um, don't talk, or they don't. They, 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 they don't have ears. But for God, God wanted to show and demonstrate that He had power over animals, over plants, over inanimate things. The donkey spoke. Numbers chapter twenty-two and verse twenty-eight. Numbers. Numbers twenty-two and verse twenty-eight. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and the ass said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? Ass, a donkey, opened up and spoke in a language that Balaam could hear. That is a miracle, because there is no, you cannot explain, there is no scientific explanation to that. There, you cannot give a, a, a scientific explanation to how a donkey spoke. It is a miracle. Now, why did God do that? God did it to demonstrate to Balaam that you are going on the wrong path. You had better retrace your steps. If a, a donkey can speak sense to you, but if I be, you had better receive sense. Praise the Lord. So the donkey spoke. The fig tree withered immediately when Jesus caused it. Matthew 21, verse 19. Matthew 21 and verse 19. Matthew 21 and verse 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and he said unto it let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever and presently the fig tree withered away 
presently that is immediately as Jesus made that pronouncement, the fig tree withered. So it was not a case of oh maybe uh, it, it was a, a period of drought, oh it was a period of no water, oh it was a period of whatever, or it, it, uh, at least the fig tree over a, a, a one week, one month period, you know. So immediately Jesus gave that commandment right there instantaneously. It with that where did the fig tree have ears to hear the commandment of Jesus? It's because Jesus walks in walked in the miraculous. So animals obeyed and opened their mouth and spoke. Plants obeyed and with that away. So what is the what is the message out of here? The message out of here is that if God can do the spectacular and the miraculous for the elements, for inanimate things, for plants, for animals, for water, for you know all of these things, therefore is well able to bring about the his purpose in you to fulfill his intent in the name of Jesus. And I know. And I'm persuaded that that will happen for you in Jesus' name. So, quickly as a as a recap, the seven dimensions of the miraculous, and these are just seven that pointed. Number one, the miracles leading to spiritual acts of creation. Jesus, God created the world. He framed the world. He spoke the world into existence. The world did not exist before. So, it was not a case of, you know, he packed something together. He created the world out of nothing. Another dimension of the miraculous is the miracle of suspending the law of nature where we see jesus walking on water where we see the metal axe floating the third dimension of the miraculous is physical healing of the body where a man born blind psh, could see a man born lame psh, could walk a man dumb and blind you know all of that the fourth dimension of the miraculous is the power over death everything that has died in your life god will bring a life to come alive in the name of jesus the fifth dimension of the miraculous is the demonstration of Jesus' power over evil spirits. Where commanded, where Jesus commanded evil spirits to go, and they went. Where God, Jesus commanded the maniac, and then he came into his right senses. Praise the Lord. The sixth dimension of the miraculous is where you know elements obey God. The elements, water turned into wine, the multiplication of uh, loaves of bread and fishes, and um, uh, um, Jesus. If I didn't even mention this one, where Jesus commanded people to sit down and then in the desert, they said, Jesus said they should sit down in the desert and the Bible says, and they sat on green grass. How did the grass come? The grass grew. As Jesus said, sit down, the grass grew. We see that in Matthew chapter 14. And then, of course, the ground opened up. And then the seventh dimension is the miracles that show that God has power over animals and plants, over inanimate things. The, 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 the donkey spoke and then the fig tree with that immediately. So, now, how do I walk in the miraculous? Because, remember I said, Jesus says that the works I do, shall you do, and greater works than this, shall you do, because I go to the Father. How do I walk in the miraculous? If you go to Luke chapter 4, we have the blueprint in Luke chapter 4. Um, I'm going to be a bit fast because of time. Luke chapter 4. If you have time, please read the entire chapter. But obviously, we, we, we are not able to read the entire chapter. 44 verses, Luke chapter 4. But Luke chapter 4 gives a blueprint of what it takes to walk in the miraculous. And may I say this to you, that every child of God has the, the ability to walk in the miraculous. I said before that I, if a believer, if a child of God, you are, not, you are not begging for miracles. You should be a carrier and a worker of miracles. How do I know that? Please, please put your hand in Luke chapter 4. Let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 16, starting from verse 17. Mark. Mark 16, starting from verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. That's part of the miraculous. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. How do you handle a serpent? A serpent is supposed to bite you, right? But because you are working in miraculous, the serpent will not bite you. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly things, it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Praise the Lord. So, this sign shall follow them, I believe. The, the, the spectacular, the miraculous is what is expected of you. If you go to Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, we see the apostles doing the spectacular. Acts chapter 5, starting from verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. By the hands of the apostles were signs, many signs and wonders wrought. Um, um, and they were in one accord in Solomon's pouch. And, one, and of the rest of no man joined them, 
but they magnified them. And believers were more added to the Lord, multitudes both um, men and women, in so much that they brought the sick into the street and laid them on the beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter, the shadow of Peter, the shadow of Peter might overshadow them. And there came also multitudes out of the cities round about, bringing the sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirit. And they were healed, every one of them. Everyone was healed. Praise the Lord. So we see the the, 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 the miraculous or the spectacular, the signs and wonders, every believer is expected to walk in it. So, going back to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, the old chapter gives us a blueprint of the steps to walk in the miraculous. Starting from verse 1, I'll just read a few verses. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Judah, returned from Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when it was an ended he afterward hunger and you know we saw all the temptations right if you did if I did, if I did that now jump to verse 14 and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about now the first thing the first point is if you want to walk in the miraculous you must be ready to engage in spiritual exercises for the enduring of the power. You must be ready to up, to ready to exist to uh, to exist, uh, engage in spiritual exercises. If you are not given to spiritual exercises, what do I mean by spiritual exercises? Fasting and prayer, spending time, quality time in the presence of God. If you are a if you're a microwave indomie Christian, if you you will struggle to walk in the in miraculous. The Bible says that and Jesus was led of spirit into the wilderness so first he went on a retreat how often do you go on retreats jesus went on a retreat and in that retreat he did not eat for 40 days and 40 nights so he was fasting because the bible says afterwards he was at hunger he was fasting when we call for you know corporate fast a lot of you don't we struggle to fast some people you struggle struggle to carry to 12 noon or 3 3 p.m and then say you can't carry to 6 if you are not going to give yourself to spiritual exercises, you will struggle in the place of working in the miraculous. It will, it's not it's not um, it's not a cost. It is you have to pay the price. You have to pay the price. P R I C E to get the price. P R I Z E. You have to pay the price. P R I C E to get the price. P R I Z E. So if you are not giving your giving to you know uh, uh, um, having time going on a retreat, uh, having quiet time, studying the Bible, praying fasting and all these spiritual exercises you would not go far matthew chapter 4 and verse 2 look at what matthew chapter 4 and verse 2 says matthew chapter 4 and verse 2 the same uh, encounter and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterwards hunger so jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights if i ask you now can you do it brief for three days it will be struggle so if you are not willing and if you are not able if you are not ready to do the spiritual exercises there will be a, a long way the bible says in luke chapter 24 and verse 49 that we should tarry tarry is a, 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 a kjb word for wait you should tarry look at luke chapter 24 and verse 49 are you willing to tarry in in one of the churches i used to attend they call night their night vigils tarry nights luke 24 for 10 and behold i send the promise of my father unto you but tarry ye in the city of jason wait until you are endured with power from on high. A lot of believers are not ready to tarry. A lot of believers are not ready to wait. A lot of believers are not ready to pay the price. If you are not ready to pay the price, you can't work in the miraculous. It's not a cost. It's, it's just basic. He says, tarry ye in Jerusalem. And they tarried for a, a, a couple of days. And that's why in Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, where did he find them? He found them in the upper room. So they were tarrying, so they were obeying Luke chapter 24, and they remained in the upper room. They were waiting on that promise, the promise of the Father. He says, and if you tarry until you are endued with power from on earth. So they waited. And were they just sitting down? I do. Of course not. They will have been waiting in prayer, in ministration, in songs, in fasting, in all of those things. So they tarried until they received that endowment. Immediately, the Holy Ghost came upon them in Acts chapter 2. They began to do the spectacular signs and wonders, preaching and all of that. So that is what it is. You have to pay the price. So prayer, fasting, tarrying, waiting on the Lord in the place of quiet time, in the place of retreat, in the place of, you know, consecration. Look at um, Luke chapter 6 as well. Jesus, you know, engaged in night vigils several times. Luke chapter 6. 
call for night vigil, people will not show up. You can't work in the miraculous. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer. He continued all night. We, four hours, five hours to do night vigil. People log up. But after one hour, people just sign off and they go and sleep. Jesus tarried all night in prayer. Verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judah and Jerusalem and from the sea came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirit, and they were and they were all healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. How did Jesus come about the virtue and the power? He had spent time, he tarried all night. As soon as you know it came down, there was a move of the power. So those of you that don't like night videos, those of you that cannot stay awake to pray, just you know the uh, night uh, the uh, um, uh, Jewish watch, twelve midnight, three a.m., six a.m., nine a.m., um, twelve noon, uh, um, nine uh, um, twelve noon, three p.m., six p.m., nine p.m., twelve midnight again. A lot of people can't do that. You love your sleep too much. If you can't do that, you can't walk in the miraculous. It's not a cause. So in the place of the miraculous. You need that. So, number one, engage in spiritual exercises of constantly praying, constantly fasting, engage in spiritual um, activities like uh, 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 videos and personal retreats. Personal retreats. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Tarry, tarry until you are endued with power. It is absolutely important. If you don't do that, if you cannot do that, you are you will be an ordinary Christian. The power of God will not be manifesting you because we saw in Acts chapter four. I beg your pardon, in Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, it was after Jesus had gone through that test that the Bible says, and he returned in the power of the Spirit. Immediately he returned the power of the Spirit. They gave him. Jesus, that before now, they didn't listen to him. As soon as he stepped into the temple, they gave him the scroll. The Bible says, and he opened and he saw that place where, which was written of Isaiah. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to do ABC. The Bible says that today is the scripture fulfilled in your, in, your, in, your, in your eyes. That is what happened. They could not resist him because he was coming with power. After spending time at the night beach at the, uh, on the mountains doing night vigil as soon as he came down in the morning they gravitated towards him he was healing and delivering people do you want the power of the holy ghost do you want to manifest the miraculous make sure that you pay this price number two because of time you must learn to overcome temptations you must learn to overcome temptations if you are falling if you keep falling to temptations falling in, into sin falling indulging in you know all these uh, iniquities the power of god for the miraculous will be far from you james chapter one James chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. James chapter 1, 14 to 16. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own loss and enticed. Then when lost at conceived, he bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is fulfilled, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and every perfect gift is from above. So the gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, with, with whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. But this gift will not manifest in who, who is led away by his sin into, you know, and is caught in that sin. It says, and when sin has finished, it brings forth death. So you must ensure that you overcome sin. The easiest way to overcome sin is to flee. Flee from every appearance of evil. So if you want to overcome um, sin, uh, overcome temptation, just simply don't 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 dance around it. You know you you know that you. I, I remember so so many years ago in 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 headquarters when somebody gave a testimony and say, oh uh, actually I, I I drank four bottles of beer but I didn't get drunk. What were you doing in the beer parlor drinking four bottles of beer? We are not saying that uh, you didn't get drunk. What stupid testimony is that? We should go you you that you know that you have tempt, uh, you are, you can be tempted to drink. Don't go near uh, 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 alcohol. That's why it is. You know that you will fall if you see a woman. Don't go near a woman. That's what it is. So you must avoid temptation. Number three, um, do you want to work in the miraculous? You must constantly engage in partaking strong meat. Strong meat. Hebrews chapter 5. What do I mean by, what does the Bible mean by strong meat? Let's read it first. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14. Hebrews 5, 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of youth have, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Verse 13 says, For everyone that uses make his own skillful in the word of righteousness is a babe. Praise the Lord. So you must grad, you must graduate to strong meat. Strong meat means that you are dissecting the word of God. You are you are you are maturing in Christ. You are able to, you know, 
uh, line upon line, precept, uh, precept upon precept, you are able to know the deep things of God, the deep color to the deep. You are able to to, to, to study the scripture, you're able to get Rema, you're able to he know the mind of God. You are God is able to reveal to you some deep things. Praise the Lord. That is what it is. You 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 grad, graduate from taking milk, which is for babes, to taking strong milk. That is, you engage in engage in activities that build your spiritual muscles that makes you to develop. So you go for you know, you go to conferences, you go for program, you sit under great men of God, you read their books, you, you consume their materials, you listen to their tapes, you subject yourself, you impacted this impartation. You know, when you have, when you, when, when you sit under a man of God who's anointed, his spirit release, is released upon you. When you read his book, when you listen to his message, when you participate in all of this, when you go for conferences, that's how you develop your spiritual muscles. That's strong meat. That's when you begin to take strong meat. That's when you begin to, you know, when we're growing up, <laughs> reading books by um, uh, uh, W. Kenyon or um, by, um, there's another man, I can't remember his name, Watch My Name, Watch My Name. <laughs> Most of us used to struggle then when we go and read Watch My Name books because it was strong meat. But the more you read it, the more you expose yourself, the more you grow. So, do you want to do the? Do you want to work in the miracular? Do you want to do the spectacular? Engage in strong meat. Don't be a baby Christian. Don't be give me, give me, give me, give me. Don't be feed me, feed me, feed me. Feed yourself. Carry the Bible. Carry various versions of the Bible. Sit down and say, I would study to understand it. I will even myself decode. Read books. Listen to great men of God. Listen to their messages, and then you build strong meat. Finally. You must exercise faith. This shine shall follow them that, that believe. You must take a step of faith. If you don't take a step of faith, you will never walk in the miraculous. You must demonstrate it. So, you, you, if you have the ability and you don't use it, it's as bad as not having it. So, you must take a step of faith. Matthew, Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. You must take a step of faith. You must stand and make that work. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say. So once you have faith, you say. Faith says. Faith speaks. Don't have faith and keep quiet. And if you have a faith that is just as small as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove from hence and to, um, and to yonder place and shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible unto you. You will do the miraculous. You will do the spectacular when you exercise your faith. Don't tell me you have faith. The faith must be used. So faith speaks. Faith is action. Faith is an action. Now, faith is. Now, faith is. Faith is now. Faith is not tomorrow. Faith is not. Faith is now. Now, faith is. Praise the Lord. So you must work. You must work it out. Finally, because of time, I'm moving very fast because our brethren in Instagram may be cut off immediately. Is one hour. Look. Look 17. Look 17 and verse 6. And the Lord said, If you had faith, had as if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamore tree be thou plucked up from the root and be planted in the sea and to obey you praise the lord so exercise of faith a step of faith you must use it little faith grows 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 so do you want to work in the miraculous do you see somebody that is sick pray for that person don't say ah ah if i pray and that person doesn't get well god forget about it. you exercise your faith and trust god that god will bring it to pass praise the lord so working in the miraculous engage in spiritual exercises prayer fasting personal retreats um, tarrying, waiting on the Lord, um, um, overcome temptations, take strong meat by, you know, reading, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, taking on materials of great men of God, consume it, and it helps you to build your spiritual uh, uh, muscles, and then exercise your faith. Take that step of faith. Take, just do it. Just like you say, do it. Don't think it. Do it. And God will back it up, and you just see that you begin to work in the miraculous. And I trust God that every one of us, as we, you know, draw the curtain to this season of science wonders and miracle it will not be an end of it but rather it will just be the beginning where we begin to walk in the miraculous truly and god will begin to honor his word in our in in our mouth and confirming it in jesus name praise the lord very quickly let's take of the communion as we take the uh, break the bread and take the wine i trust that you'll be blessed uh brethren in instagram it's going to be timed out timed out very soon but please go get the go get the communion and please make sure you participate in it. It is the power of God that is released for healing and for health and for stamina and for stability and for, you know, courage and faith, you know. So please grab the bread 
and, uh, and grab the wine. Father, we sanctify this. Lord, we ask, oh God, that as we participate and as we partake of it, Lord, the life in the body of Jesus, the life in the blood of Jesus is released unto us in the name of Jesus. Father, as we partake of it, oh God, let sickness go, let infirmity go, let every ache and pain go, and let us even receive the fullness of life in Jesus' name. Take the bread, break it, and eat. Thank you, man. Drink. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that as we have participated and partook of the body and the blood of Jesus, the life in the blood, the life in the body be released to us in Jesus' name. Let us be made partakers of this. And Lord, we have learned that this sign shall follow us. We want to see the tangible signs following us. It's not, we don't want to be believers by mouth. We want to be believers by act and by action. Therefore, as we take a step of faith, Lord, back up your word of God. You said, even for disciples, and the Lord was with them, and he was confirming the word they spoke. Lord, confirm every word that we preach with signs and wonders following. Let the miraculous and spectacular take place, O God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, because as we give your word to God, you will honor your word to God and you will bring to pass all that we desire and all that we pray so that the unbelievers may know that there is a God who rules and raises the affairs of men. Let this be so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank God for each and every one of us. I want to encourage us. Um, please, we'll be back exactly at 6 p.m. next Wednesday. But before then, next Sunday, uh, this Sunday, I beg your pardon, is the first day of the new month. August the 1st. So, I want to encourage you to come. It's a season of new beginning and I am certain that God will encounter us. So, please join us at number 42, Oba Yekini Elegunshi Street, Ikate, Leki, at 9 a.m. Number 42, Oba Yekini Elegunshi Street, uh, Ikate, Ikate, um, uh, Chisco Bus Stop, Ikate. However, if you don't live in Lagos or you stay very far from Leki, please join us on this channel. Um, we also live there and I'm sure that you'll be blessed. Um, I'm certain that you have been blessed and I'm sure that you even be blessed the more. As we go, the Lord will go before us. The Lord will go with us. The Lord will fulfill our, his counsel in our life. I pray for everyone who has logged in or who is watching or who will watch afterwards on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. May the blessings of God, may the power of God, may the spectacle of God happen to you. Somebody that is trusting God for a miracle, we have said that for a believer, miracle is a natural occurrence. May you experience and encounter that miracle. May God show for you. We have seen the dimension of miracle. Do you need healing? May the Lord heal you. Do you need God to show up? Do you need the elements to obey God? May that may be your experience in the name of Jesus. You will not be stranded to join your life. Everyone who feels stranded, who feels caging, who feels burdened, who feels pressed. May the Lord lift your body. May the Lord give you peace. And may the Lord act into your cry. And let that spectacular miracle take place. May you be in the next night for a testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord enlarge you. Go in the power of his might. And see you on Sunday at 9 a.m. Have a glorious encounter. You are blessed, you are loved in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and message shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of our Lord forever in Jesus' name. Psalm 16, verse 11. For the Lord who shows the path of life, for in his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Shalom. The Lord bless you. See you on Sunday, 9 a.m. For members of the King's Chamber, 7.30 a.m. Because we have um, early morning settlement prayer, fresh impartation, and the service. So 7.30 for you at the King's Chamber. Lekki, God bless you. Shalom.